Okay, so let's continue with the web application development and start off with the component CMP list quizzes games. This one will show all the played games on an information grid and will use the microservice endpoint called list games to fill the information on the grid. It's going to have two filters, one for the topic name and another for the player name. We are first going to adapt the backend, add some new fields on the endpoint arguments, create a transformation to return the game table with the foreign keys to the topics, and at the end we will make a fix to the list game endpoint. Our first objective is to add the filters on the list games argument object. So we are going to look for the args list games type definition and we add both of the filter criteria to the type. Both are going to be of type string since they are going to be the admin use input. Since the frontend will require to use the topic name as the filter, we will need to link the topics to the game. Just like our previous example, we will be using a transformation to make it easier to manage. Now let's continue on to modify the list games API to append the transformation and the topic name and player name filters. So our first task is to bind the new parameters in the routing sections. As you can see, you can bind a parameter to an object property using the notation args dot something. So now for the functions implementation, we will use the transformation so it can return the topic linked to the game. Let's format the code for a bit. So to have the results ordered by the most recent games, we are going to do a descending order with the RDS descending of game ID function. Now to call the transformation, we do transform of transformation game with topic. That's the name of the transformation and we change the RDS select for the RDS select reader function, skipping the parameter for the return columns, which in this case was the whole object using the this reference function. That's the exact same strategy as the last time. As for the filtering options, we are going to use RDS like passing as the first parameter the database field and on the second parameter a string text with the percentage character as the wildcard. This should look something like this, RTS like topic name and the concatenated string on the other side. 
Now let's wrap this condition in an RDS conditional function. So it only applies when the topic name argument is not null. We do the same thing for the player. And that's about it for the filtering. Now that the microservice is taken care of, we are going to go to the design of the component. We're going to quickly remove the initial label that we did on the setup. So now on our layout, we have two sections, the header with an icon and a title and below that a grid that is going to display all the data of the played games. So let's get right onto it to create it. Let's add the two containers. They are going to hang from the root container and we add a large vertical separations between the two elements. Some large padding on the top, left and right and that should keep them away from the borders. Now click on the first container and let's get some rounded borders. We add a small icon The name is played games.svg with a hyphen in the, in the middle. Size extra large and the large top and left padding. Now add a label for the title and call it label title. For the text, we are going to type quizzes, games played in bold, size large, and a large left padding as well. And now to make the icon and the title stick together, we are going to set the doc options to previous Now to select the second container, set the border to rounded. Add some shading. Now let's add a grid to the second container. And give the grid a name grid games played and use large paddings on the top left and right in this grid we are going to use the filtering so we are going to set up filtering to true pagination to true and on the page size, we are going to set to 20. And we are going to add a message in case there are no games that says no games played. Now to configure the grid, we are going to use a wizard to save some time. We can choose the base data type for the grid and the columns to show as default. So we're going to click on the magic wand icon 
on the grid, start configuration, select data type to use as the base. In our case, we are going to choose game since this grid will list all the played games. On the next step, we're going to see all the properties of the game. So we can click on show to add them to the grid as columns. We're going to use game ID, player name, start time, end time, score, total time, and topic.name, which we can now use thanks to the transformation we built. The last step shows us an option to edit the labels and title to use in multi-language mode. So we are going to skip this one since we are not using any. And at the end, we can see all of the details of the grid that were configured by the wizard from the game type. If we click on any of the details here, we can see more configurable information and we are actually going to center all the columns here. Lastly, we could rearrange the columns if we want. Next, we have another useful wizard that is going to be used to select the function in charge of the population of the grid and the filters for the data. With this wizard, we need for the grid to have an associated type. And since that step was already done by the previous wizard, we are just going to verify it by selecting on the grid. Go to details. And we can see that the game type is already set up. So we click again on the magic wand, but now we select populate from microservice. And in here, BlazePath suggests a list of all the functions that return a list of the type we selected for the base type of the grid. For our games, we only see one function, which is list games. From here on, BlazePath will read the entry parameters of the function and will show the values we can choose to create filters. And for pagination, we just select the offset and a limit while we click on the topic name and player name for the filters. Just like the last wizard, we can generate labels and titles for the multi-language options. And again, we're just going to skip this part. So when we finish the auto generated code for the loading and filtering will be available. So let's see. We have a grid init function that will be called on the component start. And we can see it loading a list of filters we selected. and they are being set to the grid through the set filter config blockies. And finally, it uses a refresh blocky to refresh the grid, which means to load it. We have another function called grid games played underscore load record. This one is the function the refresh calls each time the grid needs to re reload. And as we can see, it creates an argument variable called argListGames that is sent to the listGames function with our new pagination and filterings for the names and topic. Finally, it calls the microservice and returns the list of elements for the grid. 
in our case, we don't need to do anything extra in here, but if you need to expand the information on pagination and grid data handling, you can check the written documentation on our webpage for more information. To wrap up this implementation, we are going to do a custom render for the column to show the total played game time with a custom formatting of seconds instead of milliseconds with the unit on the side. We are going to do this with a helper function. So let's go create a folder and add the function, name it get formatted elapsed time that will do the conversion and format the text. We are going to create two variables, one with the time in seconds and a string one that will have the unit as well. We initialize the string. We check the parameter against no. And we do a millisecond to second transformation. and then do a concatenation to add the unit, which in the case of seconds is an S. Finally, we return the formatted string. And now for the custom rendering of the column, we will edit the target column. We select the grid and we edit the column, total time. We assign a key, which will be named total time. And now we can create a render column function on the logic tab associated directly to the column. So let's go to the functions and open it. This one will receive a record and returns a render column result. This function is going to be called for each grid register and is very easy to implement. Create a variable of type render column result that will store the return value. We're going to name it result. And another one of type quizzes microservice dot game. Call it record that will have our working register. We assign record data to the record variable. initialize the result with an empty object and we then set up the text property calling the get formatted elapsed time function that's the helper we just did with the total time on the register and then you return the result variable that should take care of the custom rendering of the column and the whole component as well. Now, for some testings, we are going to first try the component. 
see if we can see any information on the grid. And for that, we do need some plate games. So we can actually see the filtering and pagination we just did. To make this test faster, we are going to adjust the total number of rounds configuration and the end result screen time for the mobile application so we can cycle the games quicker. So we are going to run the solution. Open up a web page. And when we go to the game list, we cannot see any. So that's basically because there's no games played right now. So we are now going to start playing some games and generate some information so we can actually see something on this on this grid so we are just going to fast forward for a bit and we'll be back shortly If we refresh the web page, we can see all the played games ordered by game ID. We can also see the next page by clicking on the next page icon. We can filter by topic. Let's write general knowledge. Just typing Jenna is enough. Or we can filter by name. By player name, let's see Jane. Or the last name Doe, where we can see the results for both Jane and John Doe. We can also filter by both criteria. And as you can see, this component is working very well. So we are going to just go on to the next one. 